Happy Friday, YouTube! This is the episode where we get electrical. That's right, check this out. Wires, wires, juggling that and this. And we also have our voltage regulator and a fuse box. All of that's going on the bike today. It's going to be awesome. Stay tuned. All right, so first thing to go on the bike, we have this little bike handlebar mountable switch I picked up on eBay. I think it was like uh, buck fifty. It was pretty cheap. Uh, we're going to use this to switch the 12 volt electrical system and the ignition. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on right now. All right, so next on the list, we have the voltage regulator. I'm just going to mount this here on the back rack since we got all this room. I'm just going to line it up where I want and then mark the spots where I'm going to drill my holes. All right, now that I got the holes drilled, I'm going to attach the voltage regulator in place with some simple stove bolts. Now I'm just going to repeat the same process here for the fuse box. All right, now I'm going to use a relay to run the electricity for the 12 volt system. I'm going to mount that to one of these existing bolts back here. So to get started, I'm just going to remove this bolt. There, that looks good. Okay, so now that we have our relay hooked up, or not hooked up, mounted, we got that in place, we're going to need to activate it with something. So we're going to wire a 12 volt wire all the way from the battery up the frame over the switch and then it'll come back from the switch and into the coil of the relay. So since I don't want to work on a live electrical system, I'm just going to zip tie this up onto the battery holder. Oh shoot. <laughs> okay, zip tie that there. And then this will give us the proper length and we can run this across the frame over to the switch. Okay, so you just basically want to make sure that uh, it doesn't pull the wire out when you turn. So I pulled the handlebars over to the furthest extent and then I'm just going to hold the wires in place there and then tie them down right there. So I turned around the bike so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, so here's this red wire that I'm running from the battery on the back of the bike and then here's the two wires for the switch. So I'm just going to go ahead, cut the switch wire here and then also cut uh, the red wire. going to leave a little bit of slack there so we have room to strip the insulation back. All right, line that up like that. Then we're just going to do the same for this side. And then I'm just going to twist the wires together for now. And when we're done with uh, making all our splices in the electrical system, I'm going to come back and then solder all these connections and then tape them up. All right, that is good for now. So we have our incoming power into the switch. Now I'm going to do the same for the outgoing power and I'm going to run that back into the coil side of the relay. Now we've got our wire ran back from the switch. Um, the positive side of the coil in this case is the white wire. Uh, that's what's going to activate the relay. We're going to cut that down to size here and then cut our red wire to match and then I'm going to make another splice right here. Okay so now we have all of our connections to actually operate the switch and the relay and then the relay is going to have an incoming feed which will hook up to the battery and then the outgoing feed uh, which we are going to put 
into our fuse block. So that'll be our next connection. Okay, so for now we're just going to set that wire in there to remind us that's where it goes. When it's done, we'll solder that as well. Um, and then we're also going to run a jumper wire to all these other inputs in the fuse box once we're ready to solder. Now we're ready to start wiring the outgoing connections from the fuse box to the peripherals or accessories, if you'll call them that, on the rest of the bike. So that means we're going to have outgoing to the uh, tachometer, outgoing to the headlight, outgoing to the brake switch, which comes back to the brake light. So I have the first of the wires, uh, the accessory wires run. Uh, I'm going to run this over to the headlight, so I'm just going to chop off that extra cable that we don't need here. And I'm going to leave a little bit extra room on this wire here, just in case I need the slack later. I'm going to leave it a little bit loose for when I need to run the uh, negative side later. Alright, now I'm just going to go ahead and repeat that process of running the wire over from an open fuse block or open fuse slot on the fuse block and then run the wire over and then make splices for each of these. Okay, so now that we have all of our power wires running all the way back to the battery, now we're going to focus on the ignition. So the first thing we're going to do is hook up the ignition over to the input on the tachometer. That's going to be our signal input. We need to find the one wire, the one of these two, which is not grounded out to the frame. So I'm just going to kind of set the meter here so you guys can see. Now, if I go to the center one, if I touch the metal down here in the motor mount, you see it stays the same? Oh crap. <laughs> it helps if you have the right setting there. We need ohms. Okay. So we should get a zero if they're connected. Okay, they are connected. So in this case, right here is actually the negative. So what we need to do is get our signal off of this wire, which as you can see, is not connected to the frame, so that's going to be the positive side of our coil. So I'm going to cut into this wire right here and then make a splice and then run it up to the tachometer signal input. So now I'm going to go ahead and zip tie our other relay to the frame. This relay is going to be activated by uh, this same switch up here, but instead of running 12 volts, it's going to run the ignition circuit which will either kill or allow the spark through. So just checking this now, um, we need to hook up to the wires right here where the old splice is. So I'd say putting this relay here should be good. Looks like a decent spot for it anyway. Okay. Now we have a secured relay. So next is putting in the wires into the existing splice. We're going to have to cut back these. Okay, so now that we have our two switched wires hooked up down here, and we also have a ground hooked up over here, we're going to run our positive side of our coil. And we're going to hook that right into here for the, uh, for the switch. So voltage is going to come out of there, come in here, and it's going to activate the switch between these two points for uh, the spark. Okay, so now that we have our accessories and our ignition system wired up, now we're going to wire our charging system. 
So basically I'm just going to run this wire along the frame until we get back over here on this side to the yellow wire on the voltage regulator and then the output of the voltage regulator will go in to the battery to charge it which will then send electricity out to all these accessories so that's what I'm going to do next. Okay so here we have our voltage regulator uh, we have our incoming power from the generator going into yellow um, if this was a two-phase AC alternator then we'd also have one going into the pink wire um, then we have our output going to the fuse box which is just an independent fuse and then coming back up which will go into the battery and then we have green for our ground that goes into the other side of the battery so that's how you wire up this particular uh, voltage regulator slash rectifier um, you can find some diagrams uh, from the links in the descriptions for the different kinds of all of these uh, voltage regulators so now that that's uh, wired up basically all we have left to do is run our jumper wire here for these other two circuits and then solder all the connections and then tape it up and make it look nice so that's what we're going to do next okay so now that we have most of our connections uh, soldered and taped up I'm going to go ahead and put on the lugs so we can connect the wires to the battery okay so now that we have both of our lugs crimped and attached to the battery we're gonna go ahead and put in the fuses in the fuse box so uh, this first one this is gonna be the main fuse so we're gonna use a 10 amp there just pushes in like that and then uh, for the other ones I'm going to use these uh, extremely hard to open 4 amp fuses <laughs> this is basically just the smallest one I could find uh, those accessories don't take up a lot of current so uh, they don't need big fuses so I'm just gonna use these little 4 amp ones um, the reason why I have separate wires for each of them is just for troubleshooting purposes uh, that way uh, if one thing goes out they don't all go out so there we go and I'll get our little waterproof cover back on there now we have all of our fuses hooked up and we have our battery hooked up so now we can go ahead and uh, switch everything on and give it a try okay moment of truth well we got our LED lights working tachometer is not working brake light we got yep those are the running lights now I'm gonna try the switch all right that's good all right we want to listen closely to this relay here see if that's making noise uh, when we flip the switch yep that's working so really the only thing we have left to troubleshoot is the tachometer okay now you can see tachometer does work all I had was a uh, a loose or not a loose ground wire a ground wire here that I forgot to hook up for the backlight on that uh, on that tack so uh, everything's good we have headlights tachometer we have the brake light everything is basically done now it's just a matter of uh, tying up all these loose wires so it looks pretty and then uh, that'll be the end okay I just finished getting everything taped up and uh, zip tied to the frame and out of the way here's the final view see we got everything down nice and neat and then all the way over back here to the battery and then we have our awesome fuse box that is like perfect symmetry that is just basically headers that's how awesome that is <laughs> And then uh, we got the same 
stuff going on over here. Very nice, very orderly. All the wires are away and everything works. So that's the end of the video. All right, thanks for watching everybody. That was a long episode, took a lot of time to record. I think we're doing about six hours. Yeah, it's a lot of work, electrical is. Uh, but we got it all nice buttoned up and everything works. It's going to be awesome. This is what separates put it together by a kit and actual like custom level shit that's what's going on it's awesome so next episode we're going to put on the fuel tank and then fire it up for the first time and see how it runs and maybe do a little bit of tuning so i will see you guys next time make sure to hit that notification bell if you haven't done so already and subscribe bye